And there, the magic of the shoe finally appeared. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and today we are reviewing the Ultra Vanish Carbon. This is one of the first carbon plated shoes, racing shoes that they're releasing in 2022. We had the Puma Faster, we had or we will have very soon on the channel the Hoka Carbon X3. And today we have this shoe from Ultra Zero Drop Shoe. And this is actually very interesting because this is the first Zero Drop racing shoe, long distance racing shoe, we shall find out how does it compare to the best super shoes, we will find out as well. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. Before that, quick disclaimer, this shoe was sent to me by Ultra via top for running You can find this shoe on top for runningcom with my discount code, which I will put here, upper right hand corner and also in the description. Uh, you can also find this shoe at our US partner running warehouse. It will be available as of April 14th. So in a couple of weeks when you are watching this video, if you're watching on release day. Specs, we're looking at 256 grams in my size US 11. This is a bit more than most super shoes in my size, does it affect the ride and the assessment? I don't pay that much attention to weight, but it certainly feels heavier than some other fast super shoes, that's all I can say. Stack height, I said it, 33 millimeters in the heel, 33 in the forefoot, zero millimeters drop. That's the first carbon plated racing shoe with a zero millimeter drop. Very interesting and I think we need to come back to that in the right section of the video because here the zero millimeters drop and the rocker, especially the rocker, play a huge role. Width of the platform, we're looking at a very broad platform. You have the numbers on your screen but this compares, or at least this is more in the ballpark of the Nike Alpha Fly, which is a very wide racing shoe, than in the ballpark of, let's say, Vaporfly and Metaspeed Sky, which are way more narrow. So here you really have some width, especially in the forefoot, and no doubt it's an ultra shoe. It has that very wide forefoot for your toes to nicely drain. Um, so, you know, very, very wide and stable because of that yes it helps it's overall a stable ride but that that width in the forefoot and overall width even in the midfoot and the heel help with the stability geometer scores we're looking at three numbers because we have three different measurements the first one is the top layer of ego pro foam the second is the bottom layer of ego pro foam and the third is the outsole so first measurement what is above the carbon fiber plate by Carbitex measures at 29 on the drew meter scale slightly below Lightstrike Pro Zoom X very interesting the bottom layer firmer measures at 41 but you have the numbers on your screen and the outsole I believe is in the high 50s not super relevant the outsole here at least in terms of drew meter measurements but there you have it what can we say about those two layers and those two numbers first of all and you have the numbers, the comparison on your screen. And you can also, if you're curious, go on the website, my website, metaendurance.com in the description and use the shoe comparator to compare the metrics between any shoes, this shoe and see the geometry numbers for the two layers and compare those numbers with other geometry scores. It's live now, so you can go check it out. I haven't announced it yet because it's still a testing phase, but if you're watching this, go ahead go check the shoe comparator and compare the shoes. Two numbers here of, you know, softer layer, firmer layer, very, very similar values to Vaporfly Next Percent, which also has actually two layers of foam. I believe, you know, it's Ego Pro at the top and at the bottom, at least I think so. And I believe it's just two different flavors of Ego Pro. I would be curious to have the same shoe with a slightly softer bottom layer, just to have an overall a bit softer ride. This here, feels a bit more than the 29 of the um, of the top layer the softer one and slightly less than than the 41 of the of the bottom layer but certainly more in the direction of the firmer layer the overall you know right i hope this makes sense upper here i have a lot to say and i don't have 
very often many things to say about uppers, but here there are many things to say. First of all, it is super thin, like super crazy thin, but also super, it doesn't feel super high quality. It feels like a very straightforward, not super engineered mesh type of upper. It's not bad. I mean, you know, it, it works, it does the job, but it feels a bit like, you know, something, you know, I don't know how to explain, the material doesn't feel super high quality. That's just the, the, the touch of it and the way it behaves on your foot doesn't feel top end quality in terms of materials. The tongue is super super thin. There's a drawback with that upper, not a drawback, but an issue that I encountered. Here at the top of the shoe, you are supposed to have an underlay, a plasticky material, <coughs> a plasticky band that underlays here the very, you know, the very pointy end of the shoe, simply to give a bit more structure to the forefoot and avoid that upper, which is very, very unstructured to collapse a lot on your feet. This thing, this overlay, underlay, because it's inside, detached. It's supposed to be glued to the upper, it detached on one of my foot and I started feeling it when running. It was very unpleasant, so I had to stop, remove my insole and put that underlay under the, the insole and put the insole on top just, you know, to avoid having that thing playing a bad role with my toes, basically. That was very frustrating. On the other shoe, it didn't happen and the difference between the two was noticeable. Not a huge deal, but of course this thing provides some structure and here on my right shoe I didn't have it and I could feel the upper was just, you know, collapsing on my foot. Upper, I would say there's, there's some work to be done. The material doesn't feel super nice in the forefoot, in the midfoot. Way better in the heel. Feels a bit more plasticky, a bit more quality to it. As you can see, the heel is, is very, very unstructured as well. So overall, upper is very unstructured. Laces are fine, but I would work on that upper to... I know it, you know, it plays also a big role in working together with that very wide forefoot and having that space, that volume for the, for the toes to nicely spread. But here the upper deserves a bit more structure. Insert is removable. Uh, I mentioned the laces. Tongue is fine. Nothing special good or bad, it's it's okay. Midsole and ride, I think there's a lot to say here. So we have two layers of Ego Pro midsole. I think, I am not sure, but it feels like this is some kind of TPEE, maybe infused TPEE, similar in a way to Light Strike Pro. The way it behaves, at least the way it feels, the way it looks, makes me think it's that family of foams just like Light Strike Pro. Two layers, it's very hard to say what role each layer plays, but it's definitely a firmer ride compared to the top super shoes in the, the game of, you know, marathon or even any distance super shoe. It's firmer, it's more like Endorphin Pro, Sketches Speed Freak type of, type of firmness. Not bad, but I like it because I like firmer rides, but I know some people looking for softer foams won't be happy here and they will prefer, you know, RC Elites or uh, DV8 Elites, that type of softness. You don't have it here. It doesn't feel, you know, despite having the two layers with the same similar geometry numbers compared to the Vaporfly, it feels different and the Vaporfly feels softer, bouncier, same for the Alphafly, same for the Metaspeed Sky. How is the flexion of the plate in the forefoot? There's not much of it. It starts to bend here, and that's normal because the plate only runs two third of the shoe. The Carbitex plates, yeah, that, that, that's one thing to remember. And the rocker, the rocker is super, super pronounced and it feels a bit weird. So I'm gonna explain just very quickly how my run went today. I decided to go for something a bit progressive, starting at very easy paces, six minutes per kilometer, not looking at the watch. It felt okay, but... Mm, nothing special. It was pretty much that mm, okay but nothing special ride until you know let's say marathon pace where I was expecting something and nothing happened. Half marathon pace I was expecting something and not much happened either. A little bit more and then 10k pace. For me it's like 330, 325, 320 hoping so <laughs> and there the magic of the shoe finally appeared. A little bit of it, but I really had to land on the forefoot, push very hard and use that rocker in the in the toe of face. And it's only when I accumulated all these factors, speed, hard pushing on the forefoot, using that rocker, 
that I felt the shoe, you know, getting alive and revealing itself finally. Below that, when I slowed down and went back to marathon pace, recovery pace, it wasn't anything special. The rocker plays a huge role and you need to enjoy rockers, very pronounced ones, otherwise this shoe is not for you. It reminds me of the Endorphin Pro in the, in the firmness. It reminds me of the Scott shoes, the Pursuit and the Speed Carbon RC in the rocker, the geometry. The Zero Drop, is interesting if you can land mid foot forefoot and use that rocker. Heel landing really felt flat, unpleasant, hard, dull, you name it, but heel landing, on some shoes, heel landing feel very good and, and you know that heel strikers will be fine with those shoes and even better than mid foot forefoot strikers. On this one, I, I, I will struggle to recommend it to, to heel strikers. It makes sense, it's a zero drop shoe, you know, no surprises, but it's a confirmation and yeah. Also, it looks good. It, you know, I didn't try the, the grippiness. It wasn't wet or so, so I don't know about the durability. Let's come back to that in a follow-up video. Price point, $240 to 50 euros. Too much. Too much for what it is. I will have to, you know, come back and do a full assessment of the shoe in another video. But for now, I don't think, I don't see this shoe ranking in the God tire or first tire. Uh, of super shoes. It's interesting, I think for 10k pace I may have to explore a bit further, maybe even at 5k pace, which I didn't do today, I may have to explore a bit further and discover what this shoe is capable of. Marathon pace, I am afraid this is not going to be the, the sweet spot of the shoe. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it has to, to loosen up, to, to break in, I need to break in the shoe, I don't know. Let's find out, this is just my first assessment, my first impression review. So we shall see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you want to find this shoe, it's available at our partners in the description. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.